Is dating as an Asian guy the best it's ever been right now? And do these facts that I'm about to share with you back up that claim? Oh, this is something that has been talked about on the internet for the past decade. Increasingly so in the past five years, people are debating it, Andrew. But a lot of people are saying that the tide is turning. Yeah, so I'm saying as, of course, historically speaking, as we know that dating as an Asian guy has come up with its own struggles, man. We've usually been viewed as the least desirable and like, like, oh, it's been tough. P women look down on it or whatever, whatever it is. Listen, I'm telling you that this is the best it's ever been for Asian guys. So you got to take advantage of it right now. And I got the facts to prove it, David. And by the way, this video is sponsored by Coffee Meets Bagel. What's your point number one? All right. My point number one is that Asian male representation in the media is sky high right now. Yes. So what I want to say is this. As over the time of my time on the internet, all these posts that I've seen, people have always pointed at Asian male representation, particularly from Hollywood. Oh, Hollywood has given us these um, characters. They've made Asians look bad. They've emasculated Asian men. I think that those are all kind of true points, but I think the tide is turning now, David. Okay, so you're saying that it was true in the past, but in 2024, you've got as much positive male representation as there's ever been. Yes, if you look at the number of main characters that are Asian in major Hollywood productions, you can see that it has cr increased over time. And the numbers are here. It increased from 3% to 16% over the course from 2007 to 2022. Yeah. So I'm saying that... That's a significant increase. And with that, I mean, do I need to name all the names of Asian guys out there that are pretty good representations for Asian guys? I, I would say the ones that stand out to me is shout out to a young man, Zeno and Beef. Okay, that stands out to me because then he booked the SZA video afterwards. And Simu being in Barbie, but not ever even saying anything about himself being Asian. Also, I felt like was significant because that means that he took a neutral role that wasn't written for an Asian. Exactly. And like, let's even point out global media, obviously, you know, the whole Korean movie and music industry, you got to give shout outs to that. That is exposing a lot of people to Asian faces. Now, a lot of people have watched an entire K-drama series on Netflix with an Asian male lead, right? Right. Um, obviously, Steven Yoon, you know, Tim Chung was in the news. He was the bodyguard of, 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 of one of the Kardashians. You got Physical 100. Uh, now you have a lot of the mixed guys, Ross Butler, Andrew Koji, Charles Melton, Henry Golding. Okay, you got comedians that are great uh, examples. We got Ronnie Chang, Shung Wong. Uh, we got Nigel Ng. You know, a lot Roger. of the food content too, to your yes. point. Not just like, cinematic fiction we're talking about like food documentaries yeah david chang eddie huang roy Choi, del talday just the infinite number of instagram chefs guys you cannot say that asian male representation is not at the highest it's ever been now you might argue oh well asian men are still being underrated that, or the girls are getting more reps yeah and i think you can argue that maybe asian women are still being represented very well and maybe they saw the biggest benefit but Asian men saw a yeah. huge benefit. I actually think this. I think there was always prominent Asian men in a lot of private industries. But unless you were like an industry insider, you didn't know about it. But now those industry insiders are just getting more shine to people who aren't like tapped into that micro world. Right. Moving on. Andrew, number two, what's your second point? Guys, Asian men are doing better on the dating apps than they ever have before. Now, I want to bring up. I'm going to bring up some other personal anecdotes and personal stories. But first of all, Coffee Meets Bagel, and shout out to them. They are the sponsor of this video. They are now releasing their own data from 2024 that is showing something very different than it did in 2014 from the other apps. So, like, remember, like, Asian men being the most undesirable or them getting the least responses on the apps? Those were the data from 2014. But now Coffee Meets Bagel on their app. AAPI men, Asian American Pacific Islander men are getting the most likes on that app. I mean, everybody. you could just see it on the chart right here. Total likes sent to men by women. AAPI men got 45.6%. This is CMB's yeah. data that they're releasing. No, look at this pie chart. Like, I'm just saying, you've never seen a pie chart like this on a dating app that actually released their data. And Coffee Meets Bagel is not just some puny little dating app. This is one of the top ones that people know about, right? right? So this, is, this, this has been around for years. And also, if you see the Asian male rankings on this app, that for Asian American, uh, Asian American Pacific Islander women and black women, Asian men are the first pick. And then for Latina and white women, we're second pick. So it goes one, one, two, two, and it used to go one, four, three, four. Guys, so I'm just saying, 
if you've spent any time on the apps in the past 10 years, you probably have felt some difference. I do think that, especially for people who have spent at least six or seven years on the dating apps, they've really seen this difference. But I'm telling you, Coffee Meets Bagel, these are not, these are, they're not lying about these numbers. Just like those other apps that released their data in 2014, they weren't lying either. That was just the times. That's what it yeah. was. And now it's changed. Now we can go on and on about why Coffee Meets Bagel. Oh, maybe because it's better for relationships and Asian guys uh, make or meet a lot of like great relationship qualities. Like long-term picks, right? Yeah, whatever it is. I know friends that personally got married off of Coffee Meets Bagel. I've met one of my girlfriends on Coffee Meets Bagel. Yes, one of them. But I will just say that for if you're looking for a relationship, right. you should look into Coffee Meets Bagel. If you want them meme stock matches, maybe go to some other apps. You want some blue chips. Right. Oh, oh, you want some, you know, fun hookup flings, whatever. Maybe that's more another app. That is. That's not Coffee Meets Bagel. That is, Coffee Meets Bagel is more for people who are looking for relationships. That's what they gear towards and Asian guys do well on that app. So that's all I'm saying. They're getting shots on that app. Shout out to Coffee Meets Bagel. They are the sponsor of this video, but just because they're the sponsor doesn't mean I'm making this up. Hey, man. The stats are there. The there's, stats. No cap, there's no cap in the stats. Point number three, Andrew. More Asian male musicians with significant Asian, but also non-Asian fan bases for the Asian male musicians. This is important because musicians, David, we know that if you can make them dance, maybe you get in their pantalones. Whatever. I'm just saying that music plays a big part in the appeal of types of men. Are you right? saying it's because it affects how you move? It affects how you feel in your lower chakras? Yeah, if a girl wants to dance to your music, it's good. You know, like musicians always got a lot of appeal from women. It's true. So I'm saying when you have uh, big acts like BTS, that they're Asian, right? And they're from Korea. But literally, if you look at their global concerts, they got a lot of non-Asian. Oh, they'd be selling out all across the earth. It's crazy. So, and I'm saying even on the Asian American side, you got people like that are DJs like Zhu. Zhu is Chinese. You know, you got Keshi, who's got a large Asian, but also non-Asian fan base. Joji, you have Jay Park, who has a lot of non-Asian fans, actually. Eric Nam. And then you got other DJs, uh, Armin Hammer, Elefante. You got Steve Aoki, Henry Fong, Griffin. Those guys are mixed Asian. And I'm saying- You got like, a lot of people coming out that are trending even- just starting a trend this year that just popped up. Yeah, and I'm saying the more Asian male musicians you have that can appeal to non-Asians, that's just making Asian guys a lot better and more appealing and, and exposing people to our faces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's touching the, more, I guess, I don't know, the primal rhythm of the soul. Yeah. Point number four, Andrew, there are more notable good Asian male athletes. This plays, I guess, to more, what, just uh, physicality. Yeah. And I think that obviously for a long time and, you know, maybe people still, they say, okay, Asian guys are shorter on average, whatever, whatever, but we can still be great athletes. And the more notable, famous major league, I'm talking about professional Asian athletes that there are, that just should be either encouraging to Asian guys everywhere and also help make us look better. So that combats directly with the emasculated stereotype that we have. Right, right. I think there've always been successful Asian athletes, but for whatever reason, they weren't really like getting on in a commercial sense. They mm. weren't like Shohei Otani where he's like booking endorsements and stuff like that. And I mean, listen, if it means anything, Shohei is the greatest baseball player that ever lived. Yeah. And, and he's the highest paid. I see uh, Sun Heung Min, the soccer player in Europe I see, uh, from South Korea. I see his ads all over the airports all around the world. Yeah, he got he got that uh, luggage ad. And I'm saying if you're an international traveler lady, you got to see Sun Hing Min's face everywhere, you know, so you're exposed to that. You know, Jeremy Lin obviously had a big moment. That was huge. Uh, Tommy Pham. I mean, there's a lot of like part Asian athletes now that are finally speaking up about their Asian heritage. This is Jordan Clarkson, Jalen Green, which I think is cool, even though they are maybe not viewed to be more Asian than they are other things, it's still cool that they're talking about being Asian. Hey, Andrew, Big Bang Zong just, just beat Deontay yeah. Wilder. Listen, I mean, I don't know how many girls are into boxing, but Naoya Inoue is, is the best boxer in his weight class. So I'm saying like, what I'm saying is that maybe this point is more for Asian guys to feel encouraged by that there are really great Asian athletes that we are now just as good as everybody else. Maybe not in the numbers. We don't got the numbers. 
But our top athletes are up there with everybody. For sure, for sure. Point number five, Andrew, Asian restaurants and food are only surging in popularity. Now, let me talk about this. You're probably like, Andrew, but just because Asian restaurants are popular doesn't mean that Asian guys are popular. I'm like, there is some correlation. If the more popular your culture is, the more it helps you. And here's the thing about restaurants, guys. The more restaurants that are owned by Asians and serve a great experience, those are more spaces that Asian guys like you feel comfortable in and that you can use to your advantage. You match with the Eastern European girl on an app, you take her to Omakase, it's going to be great. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm just it saying. It doesn't have I'm to be trying. Omakase. It could be anything. Right, but, right, yes. Right. but yes, the fact is that the more delicious restaurants your group uh, comes up with, or bars... Asian-owned bars are on the rise, too. So Asian-themed bars are on the mm. rise. So think about it. There's just more spaces. I, I think also, too, is key, and shout out to the takeout spots. You got to be successful. That's the key for your family. But these are cool spots that are hype, like more elevated. Yes, and I'm talking about like the fact that people want to eat your food. You can like you can just use it to your advantage, and that's okay. That is what it is when your culture is popular or even if you're not Korean, but you want to take them to a Korean spot. You're not Chinese, but you want to take them to a Chinese spot. You're not Via, but you like to take, go to, I, I'm not Viet. I love Via food. I take all my dates to Vietnamese restaurants because I. it just feels good when I eat that food. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just saying, the more restaurants, the better it is for Asian guys. Yeah. Point number six, Andrew. According to a lot of Pew Research studies, Asian Americans as a whole are just seen more favorably, possibly, Andrew, maybe getting away from the war days. <laughs> so there's there's because we've talked about guys we've delved into the numbers before right now even though china as a place as as a country is viewed unfavorably in america right that's the asian one american men are being viewed more favorably yeah because you know i mean? think people think that we we go to school we follow the rules schools and rules no <laughs> <laughs> and we make and we're like you know Doing the right things. I don't know. Useful Anyways, tools. Yeah. So here's one thing. So if you look at these stats, it says like uh, um, Americans view Asians as, you know, high standing in education and finances. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, Andrew, they still see us as nerds. Yes, that is true. Maybe because a lot of Asians happen to be nerds. But uh, seeing that we have high standings in finance helps us in the dating pool because right. we're seen as like good matches. Not only that, not only that, Andrew, being a nerd is not as bad as it used to be as AI begins to take over the world. Who's going to program the AI? Hey, Do you think it's going to be the jocks or the nerds that's going to program the AI that's going to take over the world? It's true. Being nerdy is not viewed as bad as it once was. Um, uh, yeah, and then also th there's this other fun thing. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. There's this stat that says like, White people view Asians as more similar to white, while people of color see Asians as more people of color. So this is kind of a funny place that Asians are kind of stuck in between, but <laughs> I don't know. Well, because people it, say Asians are pandas, right? That's a joke. By the way, I'm just saying I've right. seen it. Right. So I'm saying that can play to your advantage if you're looking to date different types of people. This is kind of a joke here, but I'm just saying this is kind of funny. If you lean I, into this side or you lean into that side. I just don't think that Asians necessarily, Asian guys, like we're not like as um involved in the or it's not as concrete where we fall in like the culture wars right. of 2024 right 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 so overall david uh i laid out some facts there i laid out some numbers um you can combine it with your own observational facts if you've been in the dating game long enough and i got the reddit posts out there to prove right. it but what would you do you have any conclusions about i mean this? the easiest way i can put it is that you know uh you have to play a video game and beat certain levels to unlock certain players. Otherwise, those like playable characters are grayed out. I think that in a decade ago, there may have been a lot of Asian, uh, may, maybe a lot of women in the Western world, including some Asian women that had Asian men as a grayed out non-playable character. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when they're like selecting ding, 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 it would just like skip over those boxes. Right. I think in 2024, more than ever, those boxes are playable. Yeah. They're open. Like, girls aren't going to, like, uncheck that, like, Asian guy box when um, it filters for ethnicity or whatever. Yes, yes. They, I, so I think that that's... But now that Asian guys are a box that's not grayed out anymore, they're still going to need to, you know, put the work in, rise to the occasion, take care of what they need to take care of. Exactly. I do think that Asian men are faring better because 
they're an option now. They're a legit option. And uh, you're right. Women are much more open to Asian people, Asian culture than they ever have been. I do think some things to remember, even though that I'm saying this and I, to my core, I believe it's better than it ever was to be an Asian guy right now. Now, that doesn't mean, one, that Asian guys are number one on the list. Just because I'm saying Asian guys are faring better than they ever have, it doesn't mean we're dominating all the fields and that women only want Asian guys. I'm not saying that. Also, number two, I think that to really have felt this change, you need to have been on the dating apps for at least seven or eight years. You know, like, so I think really, if you're around the 28, 27, 26 and up, field then you're really gonna have seen the difference but if you're like a 21 year old guy getting on the apps i think there's other male and female dating dynamics that are coming into play that are just in general that might be hurting your dating life but it's a little bit less about your race now right 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 you're saying that it's just like you're a, being a 21 to a 31 year old you're in different phases yeah. of culture or yeah. society and number three last thing is like just because i say this and just because i do believe it's true in the macro doesn't mean that you're not going to see some videos out there of asian women or non-asian women dissing on asian guys listen there's a lot of videos out on the internet of women dissing all types of men okay right. i want to be clear there's videos dissing white guys black guys and asian guys now you're still going to see some videos of people on the street no. interviewing some chick and then she's like i don't date asian guys and, and most of those videos I, i'm going to be straight up here are from uh suburban ohio like, I believe most of them are from suburban Ohio. So, like, or like Miami the, the lo, or something. Yeah, location matters. Yeah. Uh, and also, those are just edited videos meant to go viral, anyways. So, anyways, guys, listen to the facts. You let me know in the comments down below what you think about all this. Let me know what you think about the Coffee Meets Bagel data. That is real data. I guarantee you, if other apps started releasing their data, it would look better than it did in 2014 across the board. I have to, I would bet money on it. Hey, man, shout out to CMB, and uh, let us know what you guys think in the comments section below about our points. Do you agree with this claim from the beginning of the video? Let us know what you think. Until next time, we the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.